Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing our Resource Gatherer AI. Let's create a resource node object to keep track of amounts and handle resource depletion. Let's get started. So here's the scene so far. We have our gatherer in here. He goes to a gold resource node, mines it, grabs the resource, drops it on the storage, and it gets added to the resource bank in here. So we're keeping track of the total resource amount, but not the amount in each node. Let's make each node limited. In order to do that, let's first create a resource node object. So make a new C-sharp script and let's name it resource node. Inside, let's remove all this since we want a nice, simple, clean class. And first, let's make a constructor. So a public resource node. On our constructor, we are going to receive the transform for this node and sort internally. So a transform and call it resource node transform. And we're going to store it internally. All right, now let's also make a public vector three called get position and we're going to return our resource node transform dot position. We're doing this so we can interface directly with this object and never have to deal with transforms. So we have our symbol class, which is only the reference to the transform. Now let's go into our game handler and let's create and store a reference to our resource node objects. Make a private list of resource node, resource node list. We're going to instantiate it on our awake and inside, we're going to add a new resource node for each of these gold nodes. So we now have a list of resource nodes containing the references to these three transforms. Let's test just to make sure that there are no errors in our code. Yep, okay, everything is still working perfectly fine. Now let's change our gatherer AI to interact with a resource node object instead of a transform. The gatherer requests a resource node through this function, which returns a transform, so let's swap this out for a resource node. And he will return a random one from this list in here. Do the same thing for the static function. Okay, so the game handler is now returning resource nodes instead of transforms. Now let's go to our gatherer AI. And here, as you can see, we got an error. In here, instead of a transform, we're simply going to store a resource node object which is of type resource node. Instead of doing position, we use get position and same thing down here. All right, there are no errors in here. Let's test and see if everything is working exactly the same. And yep, everything seems to be working perfectly fine, except now the script is working with our custom objects instead of directly interfacing with transforms. So we now have a class to handle our resource node objects. Let's add a resource amount field to represent the amount of resources present in this node. So make a private int resource amount. In here, let's start off with three. And now let's add some functions to deal with that amount. So let's create a public void grab resource. And here we are going to lower the resource amount. And after we do, let's spawn a pop-up to see the internal resource amount. In order to do that, let's go into the using code monkey to use the code monkey utilities, which is always you can grab for free from unitycodemonkey.com. And in there, I'm going to go into the CM debug class to spawn a text pop-up on the mouse position. And I'm going to display the resource amount. So whenever we grab the resource, we lower the internal amount and we show a pop-up so we can see what value is in there. Let's also make a public bool has resources. And here we're simply going to return if the resource amount is bigger than zero. All right, so we can now test if this node still has resources. So back in our gatherer AI, in here, when we are playing the animation, when the animation is complete, it triggers this action. And in here, let's go into our resource node and call the function grab resource. So let's test and we should see a pop-up when the gatherer finishes the animation. There he is, animation, and yep, there's the pop-up saying that it has two. That one again, and it has two. Now it goes back to that one and it should say one, and yep, there you go, one. Okay, great. Okay, so we now have a counter representing the amount of resources in the node. Let's handle depletion. We already have a function in here to test if the node has been depleted. So let's test for that when looking for a valid node. So on our game handler, 
when the get resource node we are just returning a random one but what we want to do is only return if it is still valid so let's clone our list of resource node temp resource node list equals a new list which is a clone of our resource node list this is just so we can do a cycle for int temp resource node list account and in here let's remove the invalid nodes from this list All right, so we are cloning our original resource list. We go through the list and we remove the ones that do not have resources and return a random of the ones that do have resources. Except in here, we also need to test if the count is bigger than zero, then we return a random one. If not, then we don't have any resources left, so we'll just return null, so nothing is available. Now on the gatherer AI, in here when we are looking for a nearby resource node, Previously, we were assuming we always found one, but now it may return null if there are none available. So in here, we are only going to switch the state if our node is not null. So if we do have a resource node available, then move towards it. If not, keep waiting. Okay, so this should be working. Let's just go into the resource node. Instead of starting with three, let's start with just one and let's test. There he is, he goes, he mines, it now has zero, goes back. Now he goes to this one, mines, and it has zero again. And finally, that one, mines, and zero. And now he waits because all of them have been depleted. Great, we now have limited amounts in our resource nodes. Now let's swap the sprite when the node is depleted. So in here, when we grab the resource amount, let's test if it is zero. So if resource amount, if it is under zero, then let's swap out the sprite. So go into our resource node transform, get our sprite render component and just swap the sprite to the depleted sprite, which is in the game assets. Okay, so I'm going to into my game assets class to grab the gold node depleted sprite. The game assets class was created in a previous video, so you can check it out to see how this works. Essentially, it allows me to grab a reference to this sprite object through this class. All right, so now let's see if the sprite changes. Okay, there he is, he mines, and poof, the sprite changes to display that it has been depleted. Same thing for that one, it's gone, and only that one's left. Okay, great. So as you can see, the nodes get depleted. Now our code already supports the gatherer holding more than one resource amount. So let's make him hold three units and set the nodes to also have three units. So in our gatherer, we are only going to move to storage when we have more than three units. And on the resource node, let's also start with three units. And we can now get rid of the pop-up. All right, so let's test. Okay, there he is, mines once, twice, three times, and poof, it is now depleted, and he goes and takes three to storage. Same thing for this one, mines three times, depleted, drops three, goes again, mines three, takes it there, and it's depleted. So there you have it, we created a resource node object to make our code cleaner and keep track of resource amounts in each node. In the next video we're going to handle player control. If you have any questions post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.